everybody. It's Tyler here at Kettering Kickoff, checking in team number 4967. That one team. Uh, you got to check out this robot here. I love the double catapult robots. They bring so much ingenuity to this game challenge in uh, such a cool way. We're going to show off how that works as well, too. And also some cool iterations to their climber uh, as well that we'll be talking about. By the way, they helped me speak more about this team who had a chairman's award and a district finalist under their belt. It's going to be Orson and also uh, Jacob as well, too. Uh, and that one team, like I said, bringing great ingenuity every year to their robots. Check out more about this double catapult coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics scene and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu slash apply. All right, so um, we decided to go with catapults as uh, we felt that we might be defended against. So we went for these twin catapults so that we could have two rapid fire, uh, firing shots. And this allows us to, before we were defended against, fire off both of our rounds. Um, but in order to get that to uh, go to both of the diverter, well, the, both of the shooters, we have to have this diverter mechanism. The diverter mechanism allows us to put one ball on each side. So each side, it, it will uh, push one ball off to each side, and then when it detects it's uh, diverted one ball off to the one side, it will switch the diverter to the other side to be able to evenly distribute the balls. So when you guys were looking at uh, building your robot that way, uh, was that something that was an initial concept or was that added on later? Um, with the uh, two-sided shooters, we, we, cut, we experimented with a few different designs of the said diverter, but we figured that we'd probably need it either way. I mean, it's something on teams, uh, you know, a lot of teams have done the gravity feed and that sort of thing, so it's cool to see your ingenuity uh, that way as well. Let's go into your catapults. Talk to me more about uh, some of the design. Why did you even choose to go with catapults when you were looking at game design in the first place? Yeah, so um, because, of the, um, because of all of the different choke points um, towards the edges of the scoring piece, uh, we felt that we could pretty easily get defended against and pushed around. And so in order to give them as little time as possible to try to counter us, we went for two catapults so that we could fire them both at the same time and hopefully reduce the amount of time we're sitting still. When you're looking uh, from the field, so where, where do you like to shoot from on the field first off? Uh, we typically like to fire from right at the uh, line on the tarmac. So what kind of testing did you do to try to get that sort of force out of your shots as well? It was mostly trial and error. Um, we, we built a mock-up of the... Uh, of the scoring piece. So it was mostly just shooting and trying to dial in. Uh, and Orson, if you mind, talk, talk to me more about uh, some of your design into your catapults, how that's worked out. And if we can show off a uh, test fire of it too, that'd be great. Uh, with our catapults, uh, we also decided to add a color sensor. That way, when we're going around collecting cargo, that if we get a red ball, for instance, and we're on the blue team, we wanted to be able to get rid of it without you know just launching it across the entire game so what it does is once it senses hey there's a red ball in left catapult it does the soft shot and what it does with that soft shot is it just barely gets it out of the robot and it keeps it in the same general area as we shot it at you guys might be one of the first uh catapult teams i've seen that are doing color sensing color sorting that way that's really cool yeah we wanted to have color sensors that way if we're in rotations of just picking up cargo, picking up cargo, and oops, there's a red and we're, for instance, blue, it's easy to get rid of it and move on. So let's do like a full force shot, and can you talk to me a little about like some of the safety co uh, concerns your team had to keep in mind? Because obviously there's a lot of force coming out of that robot, like how'd you make sure that you're safe during that? So in order to make sure we were safe while working on the shooter, we decided that we were going to have the robot completely off. We're going to release some pressure, that way if it ever, you know, just suddenly shoots, we're okay, we're out of the way, it's not going to hurt us. We also, at Steam Space, where we work on our robot, is we announce enabling, that way whoever's near the robot is working on the robot gets away in time before they get, you know, hit by a moving bar. 
Um, from in order throughout the course of your season before we get to your climber uh, on your catapults, were there any big major changes you made or any like uh, tweaks to try to optimize it? Uh, there were some tweaks that we did have to do with the angling of it. For instance, when we shot at first, if it's straight on, it's going to keep on going straight, so it's not going to go directly into the top hub like we wanted. So what we did with that is we turned the front end of the shooter and kept some of the back end straight in order to line it up more. Let's wrap up your robot and talk about your climber. We were talking before uh, we started filming that. You've done some iterations and tweaks to your climber in order to optimize your traversal climb. Talk to me more about what's gone into that. So with our initial climber design, we just had a front-facing hook that was pretty bulky, and it was basically just a giant cube. And then we changed the design of it way more so we can have the back hook. And the back hook is used on the very last climb, for instance, traversal. So we'd go up, hook onto our mid bar to start off, and then we'd pull it down, and then our bunny ears here would clap the bar, and then we'd lift our climber back up and knock it back again. And then once we got to the high bar, after repeating the same process to get onto the middle bar, we'd use our back hook, which we put on the traversal bar in order to get to it quicker. That way we can speed up the time of climbing. And what is your uh, approximate timing right now for a traversal climb? Well, with our old uh, manipulator driver, we had it down in like 30, 20 seconds. But typically, if we're putting someone new on it, it'll usually take 45 to 40 seconds. Well, that one team, thank you so much for showing off. You're about once again, love seeing the double, double catapult design. Uh, so, of course, good luck here at Kettering Kickoff. Well, can't wait to see future years robots as well. Thanks a lot. Uh, no, no, thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics team and FIRST Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu apply.